Hey everyone, this is Ali John Chaudhry, psychotherapist, and today we have a very exciting episode, uh, namely about flying monkeys and sibling estrangement. <laughs> this is the theme we've been wanting to do for a little while now, and of course I'm here with uh, Fern Schumer Chapman, author, and uh, it'll be very interesting for us to delve deeper into this, so that way we can have a better way of potentially understanding these type of games that come up and how to protect ourselves. Thanks for being here, Fern. It's always great to be with you. Uh, flying monkeys is something many may have never heard of, but if you're in the narcissistic world, it's a really common term and common practice. Um, it actually is rooted in the Wizard of Oz and the Wicked Witch of the West was a bit of a narcissist who employed all sorts of flying monkeys to do her dirty work. Well, that's exactly what goes on in families as well. And so I'm looking forward to hearing all about flying monkeys. <laughs> I, I think this is going to be quite an interesting subject for us to do, of course. And uh, they have all sorts of ways of doing so. For, and I think that that's the thing that happens is that oftentimes fam, uh, uh, flying monkeys serve as, uh, as uh, proxies for the narcissistic person, you know, and... They can be convinced by a narcissistic sibling, for example, that uh, they're doing good and they're acting in everyone's best interest, which really isn't the case, but, in, you know, it's, it's, it's how it's perceived. And, you know, in, in as much as there can be unsuspecting people um, uh, being used in this way, uh, there's also opportunistic people that uh, really prefer to have attention diverted away from them right? Um, that's why they get closer to the narcissistic persons in the hopes that they won't put the emphasis on them, but rather on someone else. And there's also people that enjoy high drama situations. It's like they thrive on it, they all, on, on having different things happen, you know, and, and, and participating somehow in that. Yeah, so you have this perfect match of the narcissist's needs to have somebody else do the dirty work, and then somebody else's needs to be in the mix and have the drama. Um, it's obviously a really unhealthy pattern, which occurs in a lot of families, particularly larger families, where you have one dominating person and then he or she may employ some of the other siblings to be his or her flying monkeys. Absolutely. We see this happen all the time. And we hear about this in our community, especially with people that go through these type of things, you know, and, um, you know, flying monkeys are basically pawns, right, and uh, that are used towards other people. And uh, they can be family members, like you say, friends, co workers, in some cases, and they can be sent over um, uh, to unsuspecting people like us, basically, and, and do certain types of behaviors that involve, for example, one of them is guilt tripping, shaming, gaslighting people, and really making you feel as though you're wrong, you know, um, and, and by people coming up to you in some shape or form and saying, well, why are you causing trouble for the family? Uh, can't you two just get along? Um, they've always been nice to me for this or that reason, you know, I'm not really seeing what the problem is, you know, and even the outright statement, what's wrong with you, you know, which I find is especially accusatory when you think about it. I think uh, the flying monkeys can also can often blindside the person who is on the receiving end of all this. They just didn't see it coming. They may have known they had problems with the narcissist, but they may not have actually identified that they have a flying monkey in their midst. So there's a lot of confusion and kind of, you know, curiosity about why is this happening and who is this person and why are they acting on behalf of the narcissist? Yeah, that's the thing that happens, right? We're left shocked and dismayed oftentimes when this occurs, you know, and other things that they do also is that they, they can truth twist uh, uh, by distorting facts, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, you may have someone come up and just say, well, they told me you would say that which kind of dismisses, you know, your position, or you're lying, that's not what happened, you know, so, and, and you hear about these things, uh, and, and you can experience them in, in, in very difficult ways. Uh, and, you know, uh, or, or even being told you were the bully in that situation, 
you know, which kind of sets people uh, aback in that way when they wonder, like, how can they even think that? And uh, why couldn't you let them be themselves, for example, is another statement that people can come up with as a flying monkey. Yeah, and I think that the flying mon monkey has a lot to gain in this. Number one, they're not going to be as abused by the narcissist as the one person they're going after. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, right? That that's that's why they 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 engage in that sometimes because the emphasis is not on them. They're gaining approval by the narcissist, right? And right. one of the things they also do is they attempt at uh, convincing uh, people of choosing otherwise, such as perhaps including the narcissistic person in your life. You know, uh, I had one client tell me basically uh, that one family member said to her, "I can't have you over anymore because they think you're a bad influence." For example. You know, so, uh, you know, she has issues. Why don't you give her some slack? You know, so all, almost excusing the, the narcissist's behavior, you know. Which actually gets into the whole issue of enabling. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, oh, well, she has issues and you have to forgive her. And, um, you know, there's a tendency among all of us to avoid calling out narcissists they're very powerful people, they're intimidating, and um, it's easier to sort of duck and avoid. But uh, the enablers actually rubber stamp the behavior. And it's unfortunate when we see this, because people do this out of ignorance, not necessarily out of bad faith, you know, and I think that that's the thing that people need to remember, that it's not all flying monkeys that are there to manipulate necessarily, that they're when they're being used and they don't know it, it's, it's even worse because they can actually make things worse by uh, potentially re-traumatizing people based on certain things, you know. Um, another example, something you could say is, I thought you would exercise more compassion than that, you know. Um, I'm certain that she didn't mean it. So they, like you said, it's like they almost excuse the behavior, you know. Right. And there's a whole, there's a whole list of those excuses. And um, once you start going down it and realize how many times you've probably said it, you begin to recognize that you've enabled others to behave in bad ways. You know, I think there's a, it's, a, we're in an interesting moment in time because the term narcissist has become so common and the uh, awareness that there are so many among us has become mu uh, much more common too. So uh, it's important to become familiar with some of these terms and flying monkeys is one of them, hoovering is another, gray rocking. All of these are part of the narcissistic dictionary. Yes, I agree. Absolutely. And, and we see this more and more now and people are becoming more conscious of all these words that uh, describe these behaviors, you know, so... Other things to watch out for, I think, uh, are also uh, invoking another conflict mentioned by the narcissist to overshadow the real issue. You know, uh, you did this last time and nobody said anything to you. So which basically deflects from the narcissist back onto uh, the unsuspecting sibling. You know, um, they said you did this or that. Why'd you do that? Mm -hmm. So or nobody's perfect. How about we talk about your shortcomings? You know, so, yeah. yeah very dismissive and uh, basically deflecting back, especially, you know? Yeah. And of course there's emotional and physical threats, of course, you know, um, if you can't be more tolerant then I'm gonna spend less time with you. Uh, I'll invite you over less often if you keep bringing this up. Um, uh, and, and I mean, it, it can even go into implied physical threats, you know? Um, you keep pushing and one day you're going to get it or that, that, that type of stuff like that, that is negative uh, insinuations. Uh, next time I'll make sure you get what's coming to you and that type of stuff where people really, especially the high drama people will perhaps more likely use, you know. So all of this is really a way to avoid direct open communication. Yeah. It's very Machiavellian, and the flying narcissist, the flying monkeys, do the dirty work of the narcissists who are avoiding actually addressing their own feelings and uh, trying to manage in a healthy way relationships. Yeah, and that's the thing that that's that's what's especially uh, important to remember because once people establish boundaries, then it's likely that people will rage. The narcissist will likely rage because you're not letting them in your life. And this is why uh, they can use flying monkeys, you know, and 
even use people to make emotional threats by saying uh, having another person perhaps assert that they'll threaten to tell another family member which cuts off other relationships with other family members as a means of exercising power you know so i think that that's important. i mean i think i think what's underneath both of these patterns the narcissist and the flying monkey is that you can't trust either one of them you can't trust there's no relationship Absolutely. And that leads us into what we can do, basically, when it comes to flying monkeys. And I think that a lot of times people have these questions and they always wonder, like, how can we empower ourselves in this process? Now, something you can do is uh, simply avoid uh, playing the same drama card that they do. So we don't fight fire with fire when it comes to that. Um, it has to do with uh, just recognizing that, that we don't need to, to go into drama just because they do or they bring somebody that is uh, wanting to focus on drama, right? Mm -hmm. uh, giving mm -hmm. them less access to your life is also a way to prevent them from uh, gathering fuel against you, you know, so that's key, especially as well, you know, so establishing firm boundaries, which makes that they can't really have any information that they can use. And also sol solidifying uh, relationships around you with the people that you trust. That's really important. If you know they're going to be this way, then, you know, it's it's about solidifying the people that you know will not become flying monkeys because they get to really know you in that way and know your character, know you wouldn't do certain things that you may be accused of by another person. Yeah, I think what you're describing is you need to have a limited relationship with the narcissist and the flying monkey, which means superficial, strong boundaries, um, and a sense that you're not going to allow them to chronically hurt you because you're not going to reveal too much. Exactly. You know, and not losing sight of what is true, especially with gaslighting, you know, um, it's important to acknowledge the reality of what is uh, especially important to you, your reality and such. So um, it's okay to take notes. It's okay to, to not lose sight of that, nor to have them distort your reality, even though they may try, you know, and, an especially useful strategy is also to remain rational and have emotionally neutral responses um, that avoid creating a scene, you know? So right. examples of that- Prey rocking. <laughs> yes, yes, prey rocking, yes. Uh, an example can be, thank you for voicing your concern or uh, <laughs> your attempt at portraying me in a negative light is noted. You know, <laughs> very neutral statement in that way that, you know, acknowledges what's happening, but not getting involved. You know, so um, it's it's good also to uh, remember that you can give examples about the process and avoid talking about the content from the narcissist, such as, for example, I'm no longer speaking with them because they're they're entitled and, and are controlling towards me. You know, so you're not really getting involved in the statements or the accusations, but rather what you've decided to do with it over time because of them. You know, right. So. I think we're almost out of time, Fern, actually. Yeah, well, it's a fascinating topic, and I hope that people will become much more aware of flying monkeys. And those who are aware of them, it would be very interesting and entertaining even to have some of our viewers post in the comment section some of what they've experienced from flying monkeys. Absolutely. We do welcome our uh, comments from our viewers about this subject. Please do share your stories, your insights about this and uh, how uh, you've protected yourself and such. This is always helpful to everybody else in our community. And of course, our resources are on screen right now. So uh, you can certainly take a look at those resources. And uh, I do invite people to look into the, the Facebook group, uh, the online support groups that we have. Uh, uh, with regards to the UK group, as well as the North American group, uh, all are welcome. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, it's uh, also uh, very important for people to look at our websites as well with informative articles and such. So, yeah. And I do want to add that those groups are private and confidential. So uh, you're safe in those communities. You are very much safe and private. Thank you for saying that. If people have concerns about joining, uh, those groups are private. No one from your Facebook friends list can uh, see what you're writing uh, or see that you're part of the group. So that's especially helpful. And another resource, of course, is your book. I do recommend people look at uh, uh, Brothers, Sisters, Strangers, Sibling Estrangement, and The Road to Reconciliation. It's a great read. 
it helps to bring this alive for a number of us. So thank you, Fern, for offering that. Thanks again. It's wonderful to be with you, and I'll look forward to our no next episode. Wonderful. Yes. And uh, we'll talk again very soon. You take care. Okay. Great. Thanks. Bye-bye.